Hi everyone, welcome back. So last time we began our first wing analysis in XFlyer. We did some very basic wings. We did an aspect ratio of 5, aspect ratio of 20, just a regular rectangular plan form area. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to go through and show you what happens if we um, add either dihedral, twist, or taper. So it's three different things. We're going to do this each time for an aspect ratio of 20 still. Or, well, we'll say a span of 20 when we get to the taper. So to do that, let's go ahead and define some wings. So plane, define a new plane. And we'll go ahead and make all three of them first, and then we'll go through and analyze them all to see how it works. So aspect ratio equals 20. I'm just going to say span equals 20. And we'll go with dihedral of, hmm, we'll say three degrees. Okay, we're going to get rid of the fin rid of the elevator and now let's define our wing so span of 20 so half of 20 is 10 chord still going to set to 1 offset to 0 we're not talking count sweet and a dihedral of I believe I said 3 degrees so we'll go with 3 I didn't say 3 degrees well I'll change it later and airfall still going to be the knack of 2412 just like last time now let's set our panels. So, 20 panels in the X direction. About 25 here, I'm gonna do 30 this time. There we go. We've got the negative sine distribution, which puts more panels right towards the edge, and the cosine distribution, which puts more panels at the front and the rears, which is where we want them. I click save. And this looks good save okay so i have my span right here and now let's go ahead and create the other two planes so plane define a new plane this time we're going to do it with taper span equals 20 and taper we're going to just say 50 percent taper get rid of the elevator and the fin go to define Set that to 10, and then a chord of one at the root, but we're gonna be tapering it. So at the um, at the edge, it's gonna be, so at the tip, it'll be 0.5, half of that. Offset will be zero. And if I wanna keep this from being slightly slipped forward like it is right now, as you can see, I can split the difference here. So I can say an offset of 0.25, which will move it back half the distance and that way it is moving perfectly in line. Didn't have to do that, but I think it's nice if we do it that way. Pulls the neck of 2412 both times. X panels, let's go back to 20. Y panels, 30. And we go ahead and save. Okay, so we got our span of 20, taper of 50%. Now let's do it one last time um, no taper, but we're going to have some twist added into it. Twist added into it. We'll analyze all of them and we'll talk about what we're seeing there. So plane, to find a new plane. Last one here. Span equals 20. And I'll have a twist of, we'll say two degrees. Not much twist, but just a little bit. Okay, and fine. So, once again, 10 long, one wide, and no offset. Dihedral zero, twist, and we'll say two degrees. Okay. Now what I always struggle with is figuring out if I actually twist that in the right direction. So let's go ahead and really exaggerate this to make sure it's twisted down and not twisted up. Whoop, that definitely needs to be negative. If you're wondering why does it need to be negative, your control surfaces are usually towards the edge of your aircraft. And since we reach stall at higher angles of attack, we always want our tip to be at a lower angle of attack, and our control surface, therefore, a lower angle of attack, 
so that they hit stall after our root chord hit stall. So if we have, you know, hit stall, we can still use our control surfaces to get out of that and save ourselves. But if our control surfaces hit um, stall first, well, then you're doomed. So let's not have that happen. So 20 and 30. Okay, so I hope you've gotten like a lot of practice here seeing how we can define these just basic wings in X Flyer. Now, once we have all three of these run, created, we're going to go ahead and run our analysis. Same analysis for each one, 50 meters per second for all of them. So analysis, define analysis. That looks good. Save. I am not trying to change my graph settings. Thank you. Hit analyze. Oh, foo. I actually had it set for vortex last method. That is the wrong one. So let's try that again. Analysis to find analysis. Type one, but analysis type, still just lifting line theory. Okay, and then hit analyze. Beautiful. And we'll do it for the other two as well, and then we can start talking about what we see. Wonderful. Okay. So we have quite a few graphs on here right now. So I'm going to get rid of them and only look at them one at a time. Then we can compare them to each other. So first off, dihedral, you're like, well, where is it? Well, can't you tell? Here, I'll make it bigger. There it is. And what you might be realizing is that it perfectly, almost perfectly, overlaps our regular non-dihedral um, wing. We do see some slight changes in our coefficient of moment, but beyond that, we really don't see much effect. Now, why is that? Well, dihedral is it's mostly basic geometry here. So here, let's go and check it out again in my um, little whiteboard. So the big thing is that when we have a wing, the amount of lift I have is proportional to the area, which is great. We get that. Lift proportional to area. More area, more lift. Now, when I have a dihedral, though, we have to run into a slightly different issue here because the lift only cares about the area that is projected on the surface. So as I have greater and greater dihedral, I actually have less area producing lift. So the greater my theta is here, the smaller my lift. How do I figure it out? Well, it's not that hard to find out. So if I wanted to say lift, I'm not going to use prime because prime is lift per unit span. I'll just call it lift 2. So that'll be equal to my basic lift times cosine of the dihedral. Thing is, I set co my dihedral to be 3 degrees, and cosine of 3 degrees is really, really close to one, which meant that my lift with dihedral was pretty much almost equal to my original lift. So dihedral doesn't do much for our lift and drag for the wing, because we don't usually set our dihedral to be all that high. Tight. If you're doing like a V-tail or something, then dihedral really matters, and that would affect your lift and drag of your V-tail for your plane. Where it does come in handy is for um, controls, because as you um, bank or turn, it does change the angle of attack because of your dihedral, and so one wing gets more lift, and it helps keep your plane balanced. So if I turn this way, it turns me back. If I turn this way, dihedral turns me back, and so it keeps my plane flying straight and level. Okay, let's look at the rest of the things and see how they affected the performance now. Back to X-Flyer. Okay, so dihedral, you didn't do much. Um, how about taper? Let's look at taper now. Now, taper, it should be pretty obvious that it dramatically increased the performance. 
and this was for the same span um, as my previous you know 20 active ratio I'll get rid of the five because we don't really need to see it right now there you go so you can see it dramatically increased my performance from one to the other now why is that why did I have such a, a much better lift to drag curve when I increased my taper well there's a lot of ways to figure that out um, let's go over here and back to the whiteboard and talk about it so Earlier on, I said that my aspect ratio was equal to B over C, which makes a lot of sense when you have a rectangular wing. But what about when you have a wing that looks like this? Because, like, you know, B is pretty easy. Okay, there's still B. That's the span of my wing. But what is my cord? Is my cord right here? Is my cord right here? Well, to get rid of that issue, you can reformulate your aspect ratio equation a couple of different ways. One, I can say the aspect ratio is equal to B over C still, but then I multiply it by B over B. And what that gives me is my aspect ratio is equal to B squared over the area of the wing, which, you know, is fine. That's a really good equation most of the time, but there's an easy one, easier one for us because this is a very simple shape. Another way I can keep it as simple as possible is to realize that my aspect ratio is equal to the span always but I can also just say that the cord is the average cord. So when I went to a taper of 50%, this guy right here is 0.5, this one is one, and my average cord is therefore halfway between, and so C average was equal to 0.75. So if I do my aspect ratio, what I get then is my aspect ratio is equal to 20 over 0.75, which, doing some math here in my calculator because I'm not going to try to do that right now, 80 over 3, hmm. my calculator is actually dead sadly, okay, well it's 80 over 3, but guess what, that's more than 20, how much more than 20, this is bothering me, I'm sorry, okay, okay, let's see here. So 20 divided by 0.75, 26.66. Okay, there we go. My brain is tired, everybody. Give me a break. So 26.6. So we saw that my performance increased when I went from an aspect ratio of 5 to 20. And so it also makes sense that when we went from aspect ratio of 20 to 26.6, I would also have improved performance. As a note, though, even if I were to keep my aspect ratio the same, tapering the wing does improve your performance still because it reduces the induced drag because it gives you a more elliptic distribution for your, um, for the downwash, or sorry, for the um, circulation. Okay, the last thing we have here is twist. So let's see how twist affected things. So twist, it actually did improve our overall lift the drag. You can see it also offset it. You also see that it's very, very close. Looking at coefficient lift versus coefficient drag, it's a very close curve here. It's just very, very slightly offset. So mostly what that is doing for us is it is an offset for our wing, both right here and how much lift we're producing, twisting it down, reduced our amount of lift, but also it meant that we were able to go further before we reached some sort of stall characteristics. And so it is helping our overall um, drag to lift ratio. So with this, we've seen the performance of adding dihedral, taper, and twist. We can see that taper is the most significant by far. Adding taper really drastically improves our performance. Twist more or less just offsets it slightly. And dihedral, it really doesn't do anything for um, just a for just a wing. Um, if you have a V-tail or something which has high dihedral, then it would really be affecting the performance. But for this one, for just looking at a wing, it's not really doing much for us. So hopefully this helps you. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.